you're up. Great. Thank you so much, Mr. Chair. I hope everybody can hear me. I know you can't see me, but I see all of you. Speak uh, a little clearer there. You're not coming through very clear to me, uh, Julie. Okay. Let me see. H how's it? That's how's better. Okay. That's now. Okay. Great. So uh, thank you so much, Mr. Chair. I know you can't see me, but I can see you. And I just want to say a huge thanks to the Zoom team who heroically tried to uh, make me show my face, but we haven't been able to do it. But I do want to say thanks to them. I also want to say a huge thanks to you, uh, Sean, uh, for uh, not only your extraordinarily hard work, but also your opening comments today. And I, I too want to join in and say that, uh, you know, my thoughts and, uh, and heart is with Nova Scotia today, as well as with the Canadian Armed Forces and all those affected by the helicopter crash and, and the tragedy that we heard about last night and this morning. My first uh, two-part question is actually regarding something that the Parliamentary Budget Officer has uh, said uh, today, where he's come out and said that... Um, uh, that the deficit in Canada is likely to top $252 billion. So I have two questions around this. The first is, this is a huge number. So how is it that you think Canadians should be interpreting this number? So what is it that you want to be saying to Canadians at this time? And the second part is, and you've alluded to this in your, in your answers to Mr. Polyev, but my understanding is that Canada has been the most generous in terms of our emergency relief programs and the fastest in terms of getting dollars into the hands of Canadians. Um, can we continue to be as generous uh, moving forward? Uh, thank you so much uh, for, for the question. I'll um, I, I'll give a, a two themes to to the response. Uh, the, the first is that um, uh, yes, we we can afford uh, this. Uh, the second is that we we cannot afford not to. Uh, there is a cost to everything, including inaction. And perhaps I'll start there. Uh, the absence of serious and substantial uh, federal government intervention in the present circumstances had the potential to lead to a widespread collapse of households and businesses and communities from coast to coast to coast. If you can imagine what it would be like if houses uh, were being foreclosed upon, businesses were being shut down, and people didn't have a place to return to work at the end of this public health emergency, uh, the cost would hardly be able to be measured in dollars. Uh, conversely, uh, the cost of the action that we've taken can be measured. I, I've mentioned some of the, uh, the magnitude of some of the measures we've implemented to date. The PBO report points out the cost of where this could go. Uh, he also noted in his report uh, that Canada is positioned well to respond to a challenge like this and will remain in a position to continue to respond should the need demand it. One of the reasons that we're in a particularly healthy fiscal position that enables us to use the firepower we've set aside for a crisis such as this is that going into this crisis, Canada actually had the lowest debt to GDP ratio of any G7 economy. We were coming in at uh, our lowest uh, rate of unemployment and our highest job rate and, and frankly, our lowest poverty rate that we've had since we started keeping track of those statistics over 40 years ago. Uh, the bank of uh, the governor of the Bank of Canada during his testimony at this committee uh, just a few weeks ago likened our economy to uh, that of uh, uh, I believe it was an Olympic athlete who was dealing with uh, this virus uh, and saying that someone who's that fit is more likely to come out of this virus in better shape than a person who has uh, pre-existing uh, respiratory illnesses, for example. Uh, Canada, because of the healthy fiscal position we found ourselves in heading into this crisis, is able to offer a world-class response, both in terms of its magnitude and timeliness. And I dare say that the cost of inaction would greatly outweigh the cost of responding in the manner that you've seen the government uh, take action in the past few weeks. Great. Thank you so much. My second question is about the uh, $9 billion dollar package that uh, we've announced and that has now passed the House of Commons this week, C-15. Uh, um, I'm enormously uh, proud and grateful and think it's necessary for us to be supporting our students in order to ensure that they continue to have the uh, finances to be able to continue with their post-secondary education and to continue with uh, their uh, career efforts. There are some concerns that... Um, that the, that the package might provide some disincentives for students actually to be taking some uh, to, to be taking some of the jobs that are needed to be filled during the summer period. How would you respond to that? 
Um, thanks again for the question, and it, it builds on Mr. Polyev's um, intervention at the beginning of this meeting. Um, just as a quick uh, digression, my first uh, political job was as the Students' Union President at St. Evex, and I was one of those students who used to show up on Parliament Hill to advocate for additional supports for students. Uh, when I was in that role, uh, we were begging the government to have a uh, an intervention much, much smaller by orders of magnitude uh, of what we've now seen in the past few weeks. Um, the uh, issue around a, a disincentive to work, I find, is perhaps um, uh, no, nowhere less true than when it comes to, to students uh, who value work experience often as much as they do the paycheck that comes with the jobs that they may work in the summer. Uh, so what we've done, I, I'll note in particular that uh, students, um, some students will still be working this summer, and we've made a great effort to create additional positions, 116,000 positions, to help students uh, achieve that level of work experience to kickstart their career. But there's quite a few students, tens or hundreds of thousands across Canada, that are facing an economy that is not as rosy as it appeared to be just a few short months ago. For those students, uh, we have to recognize that they too have ordinary costs of living that are coming due, whether it's rent or electricity, but they also have the added challenge of saving up for uh, the next semester or to start paying off those student loans. So some of the things that we've done include putting a moratorium on the payment of student loans for the next six months. We've included, uh, yes, an income support, but to provide an additional incentive to work for those who want to work but can't find a job, we've also created the new Canada uh, Summer Service Grant that allows students to take part in activities that will help with the fight against COVID-19, which will provide them both with work experience and a grant of up to $5,000 to help with their education. I see I'm running out of time, so I'll cut it off there. Uh, but please know that we want to support students both with the cost of living and encourage them to work while we help them save for school at the same time. Thank you. Uh, thank you both. We'll